All right, what's up, guys? My name is Grifted. Thank you for sitting down for another conversation video. Today, I have two members from Team Dark Side, the infamous Team Dark Side. We have Chris and Amadeus225. Why don't you say hi, guys? Hey, guys. Thanks for Hello, having Grifted. me. Great. Yeah. Thanks for having us here today. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. Like, I'm, I'm actually super stoked. We've been, Chris and I have been trying to get this set up for, it feels like, half a year now. It feels mm. like it's been... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's it's. Um, I'm glad to finally sit down, and I'm I'm super thankful, super blessed to sit down with you guys, and uh, uh, excited to get down into it. So, um, I don't know, uh, Amadeus, you've been on the podcast like five times at this point. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure anyone who watches me knows who you are, but just for the people who don't, why don't you give us a quick like intro about Amadeus two two five. <laughs> That's kind of you. Okay, I, I shall do that. Then. Well, hello guys. Uh, it's nice for you to meet you today. My name is Amadeus225 and I'm a hunting horn speedrunner and as of late, a uh, member of Team Darkseid. It's been three months now. Oh, okay. okay. So you've been on Team Darkseid for <laughs> yeah. three months. Wow, I didn't know it's been that long. Well, it's it's interesting, you know, because it's long but also really it short. It's longer to mm. me, compared. honestly. Longer than yeah. three months. Yeah. I believe it was back in September. It feels longer to me too, because basically, yeah. as soon as he joined Team Darkseid, he stopped talking to me. So, <laughs> really, <laughs> <laughs> he said, "You know what, Grifted? I don't need you anymore. Uh, I'm on the bigger and better things." Yeah, and also uh, he has Griffith, so many. You're an old man. <laughs> like he's so busy with all the fans now. So, like, I'm sorry, Grifted. Yeah, so many wow. fans now. Wow. <laughs> This is great. This is a <laughs> no. Actually, this isn't a podcast at all. This is actually just me sitting down to like maliciously roast Amadeus two two five for abandoning me as a friend. That's what. Yeah. How about you play that hunting horn of yours again, huh? Anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Next topic. Chris, uh, yeah. Chris, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? I'm pretty sure everyone who knows about Monster Hunter knows about Chris and Team Dark Side, but why don't you give us a brief like synopsis of Chris? Sure. Um, I'm Chris. Um, I'm the leader of Team Darkseid, um, one of the Monster Hunter YouTube channels. And yeah, playing this game for for uh, 10 years pretty much now mm. and uh, making content for about five years on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I started as a speedrunner and developed myself into more of a YouTuber Monster Hunter entertainer, I would say. Yeah. Interesting. So... So Team Darkseid's been around for like six or seven years at this point, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And the YouTube URL is is oh. is like Adri, Monster <laughs> Hunter, and then some numbers. Yeah. So what is who is Adri and how did Team Darkseid become Team Darkseid and not Adri's YouTube channel? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a funny uh, story. So um, Team Darkseid was created back in 2013 and um, originally it was Adri's personal channel that had like uh, like 100 subscribers or something like that. And back in the mm -hmm. day, like he used to play a lot with Michi and a few other German guys. It used to be just like a group of German friends um, just uploading mods on a Thor Ultimate speedruns. And um, at some point, because they, they played that much together and like wanted to make more like multiplayer oriented speedruns, they uh, eventually decided to just make a channel together and name it Team Darkseid, um, where then they decided to take Adri's channel, rename it, and um, from then po from that point on, they would upload also, of course, still solos there, but also like four-player stuff, four-player mm -hmm. uh, tri ultimate runs, um, which would then be uh, the first runs of, of Team Darkseid. Gotcha, okay. So yeah. it was sort of like a... Uh just a gradual transition where just a couple friends decided to uh just make make someone's personal youtube channel their their like team youtube channel that's actually pretty cool yeah i mean it was back in the day for ultimate the community was super small um there wasn't right. that yeah. much potential to grow on youtube and um like it all started just to have to have some fun right and um and basically because we all played the monster in our game so much that at some point mm -hmm. you kind of you you reach the limits of you have everything you did everything so what's what's the next step and uh, the next step was for many of us was to make youtube videos to try to push ourselves there to to the limit and like entertain people with it um and yeah that's mm -hmm. how everything started so um were you already friends with michi and Ad uh adri or how did you get into contact with these guys and actually like join the team I never really knew Adri that much. Um, I joined the team in 2015 
when mm-hmm. uh, For Ultimate came out. Um, that was when I made a lot of uh, like speed runs on my personal um, channel on YouTube, and I kind of got to know Michi through YouTube, actually through the YouTube comments, and um, then started to you know play with him more and um, started to making videos with him. And um, back in 2015, that was when when the when when monster hunter was on a moved away from the consoles to the handheld mm-hmm. systems and and a lot changed actually many of the old members right. weren't that much interested anymore in in, uh, in playing on the 3ds handheld system and yeah. so then i kind of assisted michi and we were still able to somehow make videos um together then with the 3ds right on so like i was uh i was actually going back through all the team dark side videos and i was going to try and write down every person that appeared in a team dark side video mm. to try and get like a complete <laughs> roster of the uh of everyone who's ever been in or associated with team dark side oh that's a lot oh my like it's a that's lot quite the endeavor. Yeah. it's a lot yeah i gave up i gave up pretty quickly <laughs> but it's gotta be it's gotta be like 50 plus 50 or more mm. i mean it, there's a lot Way of people more than and a lot of familiar faces too appear in these videos yeah so like i mean if we take a look at how many people uh, appeared there it's between 50 and 100 maybe mm-hmm. R- but probably rather towards the 100 figure but um in terms of how many of those were actually in the team officially that's below a 50 easily w- way be- below okay. 50 sure yeah and that Since, you know that kind of brings me to my next question is um so there's definitely it's sort of like there's the core team of team dark side and then there's sort of like the ancillary unit like the uh the people that aren't really a part of the team but will come in and do speed runs or help with other specific runs and everything. So what, how do you make that distinction and how do you guys source out to people who aren't necessarily a part of Team Dark Side but are, you know, it featured in the video? Oh, it's a super good question. Um, usually it's up to those people actually themselves. Um, as mm-hmm. soon as somebody is like hyped about the game, pumped about making videos and wants to like join us, make cool content with us, um, we're always open um to do that but not everybody wants that and at the same time right. um because like they they might feel like they they have some responsibilities more if they're part of the team which a little bit is the case of course um but at the same time we also cannot kind of take everybody so we we kind of right. we, there is there is some some sort of basic english uh, level of skill that you have to have in order to join us because we need to be able to communicate together sure um, and I guess a little bit of experience and stuff like that. So um, we're not super picky, but also we can't take everybody, right? Right, sure. Yeah. And, you know, for people who, you know, do want to make runs with Team Dark Side, but don't want to be actually part of the team, that's they can also work on some runs. Um, for example, uh, I know some, you know, some people like uh, Harris, which is like a really good great sword player, was uh, featuring one of the video, the four player versus Glavenance run. Just a way, you know how you know you can work with other runners mm-hmm. if they, you know, they do want you know to work on said project. And he's an interesting gotcha. example because yeah. Aris, I've I've played great sword t- two player runs for fun with him back and for ultimate when we did like you know two great swords against one hundred forty uh-huh. Rajang and stuff like that. So I know this right. guy also for a very long time. Uh, and mm-hmm. like sometimes it happens that uh, you know somebody for a long time and at some point that that person actually joins the team and for others it just happens that they don't join for whatever reason, right? Yeah. Mm. So maybe Amadeus, you can uh, help like answer this question. As far as being like an official member of Team Dark Side, what was the mm-hmm. sort of uh, you know application process? What was the hiring process like to actually be a part of the official Team Dark Side? Interesting. So regarding this, uh, you know, back in back in the day when I first got interested in joining the team, it was after the uh, ESA um, um, speedrunning event. I mm-hmm. believe you do remember that event as well. It was the European speedrunning uh, assembly. Right. I, after watching the team, after being interested and also communicating with a good friend of mine, Pepo, which he, who was a part of the team, sure. I decided to con- to contact um, Chris on Twitter and see, um, you know, how, like, oh, you know, I'm really interested in joining the team. Uh, how does it work? And we had a really good exchange. And mm-hmm. I, you know, as a speedrunner, I wanted to join the team as such. Right. Someone uh, making speedrun content. Um, so in order for that to be done, uh, okay, uh, I I essentially needed to make um, a speedrun that mm-hmm. I would be proud of and like show it to the team and see how they would like it. And in my case, that was the uh, the 
the gold rating video mm -hmm. that you may you may remember non that the, the sub yes the non TA sub for gold rating mm -hmm. that that's act, uh, you know funnily enough it didn't start like this I, I had a different run in mind the silver lows but the time was really long and for a speed run I mean even you know even if it was anti guard it needed to be fast right, right. so. Funnily enough, this support this gives me the opportunity to improve and get a you know a better run on the channel. So sure. that's kind of how uh, I also went with this. I also started to you know know more the members mm -hmm. because it's not at the end of the day. I, I mean, at first I wanted to go uh, for the speed running, but as I joined the team, I realized that it was more than that. You know, uh, you have been able to work on some four player other runs, yeah. also doing um, some other stuff helping the team, and I really appreciate that. It's not just about speedrunning. It's about your implication in the team. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, when Amadeus reached out to you and was like, yo, I want to be a part of this team, were you already familiar <laughs> with uh, Amadeus's work as a hunting horn speedrunner, or, or was this was this a new encounter for you? I actually wasn't. Um, but, like, yeah, I wasn't. But we talked a lot, actually, in the DMs, I think. To just mm -hmm. find out, mm -hmm. for me, it was important to find out what what he actually really wants. And the uh, question is, can we give it to him? Can we provide him some of the things that he wishes? And uh, at the same time, what could he do for us in the team? So there was a lot mm -hmm. to find out and uh, about him as a person. And I then saw, of course, a, a lot of his runs. Uh, I, I knew, obviously, that he, he was a good player, which was great. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, right, like being uh, having a cool personality is super important too. So right, right. There's yes. more. There's more to being a part of a team than just being like an ace on the sticks. Like you actually have precisely to, right, right, right. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, so funny story about Amadeus two two five and how I met him. I've known him <laughs> for like, dang, over a year now. It's been a, probably a year. So, so he joined uh, TSC's Discord, okay? He joined TSC's Discord, <laughs> and me and TSC go, go really far back. He's one of, the, one of the reasons why I even got into this community. But in his Discord, we had a section for the hunting horn. And as I became more popular, more people started to join to, like, talk to me and learn about speedrunning with the hunting horn and uh, ask questions and stuff. So we, so we made this little section in our Discord for the hunting horn. And... I don't know. I say like every every couple weeks there'd be like a new person who shows up and it, you know wants to speed run, and you know sometimes they'd stick around, sometimes they wouldn't, and it was just you know it's just one of those things. And uh, Amadeus joins, and uh, right after my friend was speed running the uh, Arc Tempered Lunastra, uh, which. <laughs> 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 Which was okay. I remember. Inevitable truth. He's a homie. He goes way back. He he made the speed run, which was the world record at the time, but uh, it featured a lot of Gajalaka use, which at the time was TA legal, and uh, but but it was a super fast time for our Tempered Lunastra. So Amadeus joins, and uh, immediately starts talking with Inevitable Truth, and they're talking about Lunastra, and they're trying to develop the matchup, and I think the Lunastra was like his first. I think that was your first official TA speedrun, right? That is how I started. Yeah. My, yes, on my channel. The first So, one. and like not Correct. to seem calloused or like a douchebag, but I, I kind of didn't really like pay attention. And then Inevitable Truth DM'd me and was like, yo, this guy is the real deal. You got to watch his Lunasha speedrun. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll watch it in a second. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Okay, I'm grifted. I'm really, I'm a busy guy. <laughs> And, My man's busy making money. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> making that YouTube money. Uh, so I, cl I click on the video and I watch it. And it was just, I mean, realistically, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful speed run. And immediately you could just tell that Amadeus just, he, he understood the game and he understood the weapon. Uh, and there, there wasn't really much, there wasn't really much I could teach him, right? Like he was already better than me the day he joined the Discord. <laughs> and uh and like basically That's all of our exchanges were me like what i could give him advice about was you know youtube and uh how to develop a fan base stuff like that um but as far as like you know honing amadeus c25 there it's like trying to hone a this kinetic ball of energy there's just no controlling it it's just like so good so talented and uh, uh really unfair 
to be that good, and it makes me really <laughs> upset, really mad. <laughs> I'm really happy that you say. Well, you know, you, you didn't really say this, but it actually helped me a lot when it comes, like you said, YouTubing, because you know I've I never had a YouTube channel before, and as of late, I'm seeing some you know uh, relative relative success compared to the size of my channel. Well, yeah, I've seen but that. most of them, it's also your your live streams, right? Like you're you're getting yes. a lot of views on those. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that exact, um, it's, go it's going better because when I compare, you know, back when I started, like 10 or 11 months ago, mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't really know all of this. But Goethe gave me a lot of good advice, like, for example, how to um, to, uh, to work on the thumbnails, the, um, the, also the quality of the, um, uh, the, uh, the name of the, you know, the videos. Because I, I tended to have, like, really long, <laughs> long videos. Yeah, like, like the longest the titles ever. Yeah. <laughs> the longest titles. I was like, no one's going to click and, on that, dude. Yeah. Exactly. So essentially, it helped me. Make, it made it helped me a lot because I was able to advertise it better. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I believe we also talked about uh, what I wanted to do in this community. What I actually, what, what was the end goal? Was it just doing speedruns? Right. And I think it's kind of related to what happened with Team Dark Side in a way because I've always wanted to like, be a part of this community and an active part. Uh, ideally, it would be linked to the weapon I love, you know, which is a hunting horn. But I'm happy to say that right now I've been able to, I wouldn't say like totally reach that goal, but I'm getting there. Like it's actually uh, really awesome to meet all these people, like working the team, mm -hmm. especially working in the team. That's like one of the most interesting things I've done this year. It's like nothing yeah. I've ever done. And what what a great opportunity too. I mean, um, you know, when before you joined Team Darkside, I think you were up to almost 500 subscribers, which which is really good for a Monster Hunter speedrunning YouTube channel. That's about like the average that most speedrunners will will get to. And joining Team Dark Side, I mean, you're you're you blew up. I mean, you're at almost what three thousand subscribers now. What what are you at? Twenty two hundred. I'm like uh two uh, two thousand and two hundred. Yeah, I mean that's amazing. Two thousand. That's amazing, and yeah, and hopefully good. you get about a hundred thousand more subscribers because you definitely deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, dude. The team really. Yeah. That's a dream, it, man. hundred k. Yeah. Do it. Maybe YouTube makes a, like a hunting horn engraved a hunting horn uh, icon into their play button and sends sends it to you. Oh, uh, that would be oh, insane. Love, I would love oh, like a custom art or something. Right. That would be amazing, dude. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but back Thank on you. back on Team Dark Side, I you know what I find really interesting is that you know there's there's some detractors of team dark side mm. where uh or naysayers where it's 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 becoming less of a speedrun channel and more of like this this meme build youtube channel but what i found interesting when going back wait, wait, YouTube, wait. what do you mean by meme build <laughs> well not not meme builds but meme videos like uh like uh uh the ice bar snowball the snowball video right? yeah 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 but so going back in the catalog this has been a th uh, this has been Team Darkside's mo for the longest. I mean, if you go back, hmm. there were boomerang speedruns, there were uh, kick speedruns, like kick only speedruns. There were, I mean, if you go even further back, when I first became aware of Team Darkside, at the one thousand subscriber special, okay, the one thousand subscriber special, yeah. they they made a a video called the top one hundred in game sets, okay. So Team Darkside has been doing build videos. They've been doing sort of fun. We'll say not meme speedruns, but we'll say funny speedruns. Uh, <laughs> forever. So it's not like Team Darkside has changed, uh, really at all. They're still doing the same content. I, I think now just on a a more grandiose scale, on a on a more um, unique scale. Yes, actually, it's pretty surprising how how little we've changed in the in those many years. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, Nerf Snowballs. It's literally the same fucking thing. That that we did <laughs> four years ago, um, right. just in world now. It, it's I think the thing is that like um, way back in the day, it, it used to be really only only speed runs, and most of those speed runs were, they were all really similar because it was it used to be like a, a status status light bow gunner mm -hmm. and three right. crouch fire pierce heavy bow gunners, and then literally go ham on that monster. That was the meta in, in try ultimate. That was the mm -hmm. meta in four ultimate, and like. And it was really, really similar um, every video. But then 
like Michi was one of the first driving forces in the team behind like trying to like do things differently in my opinion like he hmm. he saw like very early already that uh, other videos that are not completely only speedrun and time oriented are actually really well perceived by many people in the community and uh, mm -hmm. might often get more views than than those really crazy speedrun times and that's why he then started to make these kind of different videos, 1,000 subscriber special or, or um, 3,000 subscriber special. And these are all yeah. like kind of those, those, those kind of challenge experimental videos where you try to like kill some monsters with weird things or with as yeah. few hits as possible or whatnot. You know? Right. And, and, and Team Darkseid was really uh, sort of the, f the forerunner in that regard where it's, you realize the the potential of, of a speedrun channel, but there's so much more to it. Like you can branch off and do unique and different sort of videos while still maintaining the integrity of being a, a speedrun channel. And I think that's really amazing to have, have have that foresight so early on because now we see YouTube channels trying to replicate it. Oh, do we? Oh boy, do we? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, if I'm I know aware for me, you know, I know for me, um, you guys were a big influence because, you know, I wanted to when I started my YouTube channel, I wanted to bridge the gap between intermediate and speedrunners because I was frustrated mm -hmm. that there was no uh, speed like speedrunners making informational content about how to become a speedrunner, what goes into it. Uh, and so that was the basis of my YouTube channel. But I realized immediately just from watching Team Dark Side stuff that there needs to be more than just a speed run if I want to get my get my message out. So I have this message and mm. I want to get it to as many people as I can. But if I just post speed runs, I'm going to have, you know, 500 subscribers and my, my core audience is going to be really small. So it's, it's actually important to grow your audience so you can get your message to more people. And it sort of worked out perfectly for my YouTube channel because the kind of content I wanted to make, I basically did speed run so I could back up what I said. That's that's literally what I did. I Pretty became much. a speedrunner so I could have like that sort of um you know that authority to be yeah, like, "Hey, this yeah. is how it's yeah, actually yeah. is." Yep. Um, Indeed. But Team Darkseid was a big influence on me in, in, in a lot of in a lot of ways. Just just being able to see the vision that there's more to it. Like if you want to have a big audience, you have to do more than just speedrunning. With that being said though, how important is it is the integrity of a speedrun to Team Darkseid? Is that still one of the major focuses of Team Darkseid or, you know, in, in five years, can you see your YouTube channel not being speedrun focused and being something completely different? So it's obviously speedruns are a part of our channel. I wouldn't really call ourselves like a speedrun channel at all anyways. But the thing mm. is like many of the things that we're doing, um, especially four player stuff, the more of a speedrunner you are, the more essentially the more experience you have the easier it is to do everything so right. being a speedrunner and doing these kind of videos while necessarily they're not even a, a real speedrun it's it's still so much more possible in fact it is only possible if you have at least one or two people in that four player team that played this series for many years that know exactly how to exploit certain things this mm. game is so freaking deep there's so yeah, much to is. discover and like there's so much to know about and if you don't know these these certain things how to push things to the limit how to have a setup of four players in, in a hunt how monsters work how, how this game works in general then it's it's really difficult to make content that amazes people or that where people are blown away by and mm -hmm. and that that's why like we we do have um, most of our members in the team are speedrunners because it just makes these even those cheesy hunts they're not even they're just fun hunts essentially but yeah those are so much more impressive if if you know what this game is about and as a speedrunner that's right. exactly what you're doing right you're trying to exploit this game as much as possible and you can yeah, just exactly. use that skill that you have and you just mm -hmm. kind of make a, something something different out of it, which is a little bit more relatable to the average viewer because not everybody mm -hmm. is a speedrunner and some few people are actually interested uh, to watch a video that's just about getting the fastest time. People actually right. very surprisingly, very, a very low amount of people actually care about that at all. That they they want to be entertained at the end of the day. They they want fucking cool content. They want to watch a, yeah. a five minute video. And they want to be like, dude, that was fucking awesome. So like a fucking dope gameplay or a super cool idea where you mm -hmm. use something that nobody would think about and you turn it into something actual good. 
that's what people what people really love. If it's then then like a few seconds faster than somebody else's video, some people care, but the majority really doesn't. No, I, I think you make a really good point there too. Um, but with that being said, like, do you feel like um, like there's a sort of pressure as a content creator to to sort of cater? I you know I hate to use the word casual because I feel like that word is so demonized and so. Um, so demon I miss you. Yeah, but it, yeah, it is. But um, do you feel like as a content creator, you have an obligation to appeal to the players who aren't interested in speedrunning? Well, there there is a lot of pressure in many ways. Uh, one way I can I can think of is that um, when you what we often do is when something something new new content comes out, we try to be fast. Mm -hmm. We try to do something on day one. Usually, that's for us. It's like stuff comes out at two a.m. in the morning. So we literally sit there between two a.m. to sometimes five, even six a.m. in the morning, and try to get something like decent enough out there. And usually, it's not the fastest time. It's not the best strategy because like we're just right. trying to to use something and see if it works. And then the next few couple of days and weeks and months, um, things start to get more polished. Strategies and sets. What are we using? What is actually the best for for, for that setup? And then mm -hmm. often we, we find ourselves in a situation where where we did something super early, got got a lot of use for it, but the time or whatever we're using for it isn't necessarily 100% optimized, obviously. But then there's right. many people that, that do actually, like they see they see only the difference, and but they don't see like how fast this video was made at the beginning of the release. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure in that regard where, where people literally say, oh, Team Doxid is trash because they're so much, so much slower than somebody mm -hmm. else that had made possibly way more time for this video. Yeah. Um, and another way also, uh, but not only in speedruns, it's also, even if we talk about something like build videos, there's so much pressure because some, some people then say, okay, well, that is nice, but like your video, uh, your, 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 yeah, like your, um, there's pressure because people say your build that you're recommending yeah. doesn't necessarily have the highest DPS possible on the training pole. Right. Where then I have to argument, counter argument, be like, okay, the training pole is nice, but it, it's like, the, it doesn't, the pole doesn't attack you, right? It's, it's not a realistic right. hunt scenario. Like in all these things, like there's definitely a lot of pressure involved. Yeah. And I, I noticed that too. I was kind of combing through a bunch of these videos. Um, and especially on the, the build video, uh, the, the recent one, the, um, bow builds mm -hmm. i found it actually really interesting because you you went out of your way so there's there's the sort of like end like the you know the best like if you had every decoration available and then there's sort of like the middle and then there's like the budget uh build mm -hmm. and i was like okay like yeah i can get behind this and uh but then i read in the comment section your pinned comments and it, and you made it very very clear like look we're not saying telling you like this is the best way to play. We're not telling you uh, whatever. I mean, the whole post was like two paragraphs long. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why he had to put that sort of disclaimer in there. And then as the video was playing, the first within the first minute, there's a vocal disclaimer of like, hey, guys, this is not we're not telling you how to play the game. Um, so I, I, I was just curious, like, did you do you have a lot of backlash in that regard? Like, are people just sort of turned off by like the, the you know, the word meta? Uh, do you find a, a, lo a lot of backlash in that regard? Well, sometimes a little bit. I mean, it's quite difficult. Definitely. The word meta is difficult because the meta, it, might, it depends. What are you doing? Right. There's so many different metas, actually. Mm -hmm that are viable yeah. totally. And we're just trying to give like one way to play this weapon, play some things, play a build that works with as many different setup scenarios as we can possibly um, mm -hmm. create and something that is yeah applicable to, to all of those. And, but naturally, there will be, will be another one. There will be another scenario where, where it doesn't come out on top because you can't cover everything. You can't cover everything in right. one video. Right. But, no, absolutely. Yeah. I just find it kind of interesting because a lot of the bigger YouTubers like Jinx and Tuna, Game Economists, they, they also do these sort of um, disclaimers like, uh, like, hey, we're not telling you how to play the game. We're not saying this is like the best thing to use. You know, um, I just kind of I don't know. It, it feels like in this community, there's so much room for the community to sort of turn and be like, oh, we, we don't want to do the meta. We don't care about the meta. What about the people who, you know, want to survive and who, who, do, who aren't resetting for quests and stuff? So I feel like that, that majority of people, they're a loud majority. 
so that, and they that's influence a, a lot of content creators. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's also actually a big part with resetting. Like many people actually don't even really get the difference between us making a speed run and they're trying to copy that build and then trying to use it. Well, if you're trying to become a speed runner or make a speed run, that's fucking great, right? But like if you mm-hmm. want to just have a great time and hunt, we don't even use those speed run builds ourselves if we're playing normally in farming stuff. We are using right, stuff right, right. that's more, it's just more. Speak for yourself. <laughs> okay, then I'm speaking oh, for Peppo, Michi, me, and everybody except Deos because he's a, he's fucking pro. He he doesn't need help. Yes, he's too good. He's no, too I'm, good. I'm kidding. I actually also have a different set, but I was just uh, joking around. Yeah, but it's important to under, underline that because many many, mm-hmm. people, many people don't understand. And a few months back when we did this long sword um uh, build video, that's what the first time we really understood because we we understood the point of view of many of our viewers. Um, where they weren't aware of us making a differentiation between those two, they 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 thought it was going to be the same build, but it's it's not. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, since then I tried to more, um, like communicate it more clearly. What are we trying mm-hmm. to achieve here, and why things like health boosts are recommended here? And um, mm-hmm. that's one of the things I really like about uh, the the build videos. Actually, it's showcasing that obviously you know I, I mean I I may I might be a speedrunner. And when you're uh, hunting casually or just doing some event quests with top monsters like uh, the Safi Jiva Siege, like for the first time, or Tempered Rajang, stuff like that, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, once I switch to you know having some more like quality of life skills, like let's say health boost, I've realized the benefit of, from these things because you're not in the speedrun settings and you have four people playing with you. So if you drop some damage in there, it won't really hurt you. And sur- being able to survive, you know, being able to play, so, you know, more room for mistakes. I really appreciate that, and that's I think is one you know most of the viewers of our channel mm-hmm. uh, they, they they want you know they are not like you don't need to be necessarily a pro player or anything, but these build videos they show you okay if you don't have the decos this is what you can get that's pretty good um, if you have the decos you can get this you can yeah. and you can also most importantly you can keep the good damage while having um, quality of life uh, skills mm-hmm. that's one of the best thing Monster Hunter World did for the franchise. When they refine the skill of you know. yeah because at the end of the day it's going to be like a, a difference of zero to five percent more or less damage but at the same time you're right. so much yeah. more tanky and you, you won't you won't get one shot anymore and also like if we're making those videos we we want to we want to achieve or attract as many people or viewers as possible with these videos obviously and like the question is mm-hmm. like who's watching this video to make a build for a speed run Absolutely nobody. Speedrunners can right. make their builds themselves. They don't need that video. Who needs that video? People that aren't able to make those builds themselves. And they mm-hmm. are people that do not want to get one-shotted, but then you still have people in the comments complaining, right? Why Why? Why is there like less DPS than with my build on the training pole? Yeah. Right, right. Oh. Exactly. Why, why do you have health boost on the, on the, on the gunner set? You're going to get one-shotted anyway. So. <laughs> Some people sometimes they use stuff like that, but yeah i think like chris said it's important to know your audience and like what you're actually making these videos for yeah and at the end of the day i think we i think that's pretty good like the direction for these yeah definitely so when it comes to sort of making a team dark side video what's the like what's the process like is there like a do you guys sit down as a team and go over like a schedule and be like, okay, you guys are going to do this speed run. You guys are going to work on this video. Uh, what, how does the breakdown sort of work with actually creating the content? So um, we actually have like a list of <laughs> run ideas that we have um, <laughs> where we have uh, different columns where there's um, which weapons, which monsters, um, like what run we're doing. Uh, how many people, if it's solo or two player or four player, and then we prioritize mm-hmm. and see which ones do we want to do first, A, B, C. And then when we have our team calls every Sunday at, uh, at 9 p.m., we have our, our team calls. And um, then we'll get over those if we if we if we don't have anything scheduled for for the next week, and then we see okay who has time who wants to do this one who wants to do this run. Uh, whenever somebody wants to do something, they can do it right. So um, mm-hmm. it's always up to um, I mean. I guess, Dios, you can say that better yourself. It's always up to you guys what you want to do. Pretty much, because we can, during the team call, we have the opportunity to, uh, you know, present some ideas that we have, like maybe runs. We can also discuss over runs that have been done, like maybe um, perfecting strategies. Mm-hmm. And we, we also have, you know, people like, I really like, like uh, Michi, who has a lot of um, 
he has all, he always has those in, like interesting ideas, and that's what yeah. one thing I you know I really like is that like ideas about the different runs, uh, always testing things, always trying new uh, new things. So uh, people like Mitchy, for example, are really I would say really uh, uh, important for the team, and also like uh, cool to be you know with mm-hmm. when you cause they give you like, um, before I joined the team, I never really thought about making four player runs, and but then I had fun making like the snowball video or other like four player runs. It you know it enables you to make different kind of content, and when you when you think like this, there is way more things that you can do with Monster Hunter outside of just like oh four hunters killing a monster as fast as possible. Right. Yeah, that would be that, that's just a small example. Yeah, there, there's so many things, and, and especially Michi, like he has so much experience when it comes to content creation com- with Monster Hunter. That like he knows mm-hmm. he knows almost always which kind of things are going to get viewed, which kind of things is what people want to see. And we can yeah. see that our some of our top videos they are actually they w- w- they they were projects that Michi started, and mm-hmm. they turned out great. The so, creativity is mm-hmm. real. So for um so for like a standard four player uh speed run Amadeus uh how much how much actual time is spent doing a speed run I mean does it you know a day do you guys put a day into it do you guys put you know a week into it what what is to be expected from like you know a four player speed run from Team Dark Side Now the the short answer will be it depends but mm-hmm. in order to elaborate more on this it, it actually really um, it, it depends, you know, on the difficulty of the quest. Because at first, like you know, we may have we have an idea of a run. Uh, let's say we want to do a, a Shara run four player, for example. Um, a, we you know we start theory crafting and doing all strategies. But once when you actually start running the quest, uh, things may turn differently. Mm-hmm. You, you might have more difficulties uh, doing a, a, like performing the setup or actually having your script. So. It can take more. Sometimes, like in one day, we can get the run done. So all the time, it might take like two or three more days, mm-hmm. uh, d- depending on, on this. So it, it really depends because and some people may, may not realize, but four player runs are actually not easy to perform. No, not no, at all. Definitely not. Because when you are four player fighting one monster and having to deal with the erratic AI, um, also timing, the timing needs to be you know, done properly. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fat things that can go wrong, but I think that's also one of the best part of the popular run is like how beautiful it is when they actually su- you succeed and you create the project. Right. That that's part of the, that's what makes me proud, honestly. When because so, you you start with a project, you encounter some technical difficulties or um, uh, adversities in the speed run, but once it's finally done and you actually get a good run or a good video, and you, you can see it in the comment sec- section, yeah. it really feels good. Right. Yeah, I can imagine. My, like my experience with a uh, four player speed run <laughs> was only watching um, TSC, Jin Fury, uh, Fometo and a bunch of those guys doing the ancient lesson four player oh, speed yes. run, uh, which I wasn't even I was not even a part of. Um, and I just sort of just watched it all happen uh, before my eyes. And like just just the coordination alone is so much and it's not exactly easy to like reset especially in base world to reset four players on a speed run um i don't know it's just kind of kind of interesting to watch it all happen and i can imagine the difficulties that a four player speed run would would bring you you made a really good video about that topic i, I remember i saw that like half a hey, year ago thanks uh, the scripting and uh the whole way of storytelling and how you structure that video was really good actually thank you yeah the narration it, it really felt that's what that's one thing that gripped that i've always been good at it's like the energy has it pulls you in, you know? mm. and then you listen to the story, presenting the facts, uh, the way it does. Trust to you, man. Okay. And I, I just want. To, hopefully, you make more videos soon. That's embarrassing. But, <laughs> don't don't give me compliments. That's embarrassing. <laughs> no, but thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I I really like that video. A lot of people ask me like, what what video I'm most proud of, and uh, the ancient lesson one is actually the one that I'm most proud of, and I think I did. Hopefully, I did all the players who participated in that justice and uh, highlighted everyone. That's that that was the goal. That wasn't a video for me. That was a video for the guys who who did that. So, <laughs> yeah, I like that one. The ancient H&L, lesson. I remember we tried that too. We, we tried a four player run too. Uh, it was just three or four days. We didn't. 
we haven't invested in enough time into it to actually be successful because that one was definitely super time consuming that run that one's brutal it was brutal hmm. and um yeah so we never ended we ended up never uploading any videos with ancient legend on the channel <laughs> yeah what are the few um, uh, fun videos that we... fun fun what, fact what? about amadeus 225 the only hunting horn player <laughs> to hold the world record for pre and post ancient legion ancient Oh boy! Uh, Let that I know how to solve these monsters. <laughs> yeah. Let that. Uh, I can tell you. Me. I can tell you solving this thing with hunting on was uh, was, uh, was pretty, pretty complicated back then. Before I was born, hunting on wasn't you know what you, <laughs> you're seeing now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a dance, it was a I'm I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Um, so being a a new player, I think the newest team member of Team Dark Side. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you are the newest one. Um, I'm as of now, I am not the newest, but I used to. I'm relatively new. Okay. Well, oh, I think you, yeah. Vice jo Vice rejoined like really shortly after you, did he? Officially. Oh, uh, um. I mean, are we talking about the members doing runs? Or because you also have the you know the Chinese team, for example. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Mm, but yeah, but they're also but, TDS, but they're like different TDS. They're also yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But yeah, there's international about, uh, team dark runners. sides now. Indeed, yeah, which yeah, is, which is cool. insane. That's the yeah. craziest thing I've ever heard of. But <laughs> I guess you're correct. I, I'll be the the um, yeah the, so, uh, the the most recent one. Yeah. So as the um one of the newer players, like all the newer, yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of pressures do you face uh, as as a newer member of the team? Like, do you feel confident to bring ideas up to the team? Do you feel pressure from the team to perform? And what about <laughs> the um the community's view of you too. Is that something you're concerned with as well? Like how the community views you and your individual skill? That's a good question, actually. Hey, I'm pretty I, good at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe maybe I should actually start uh, stop complimenting you because you're starting to. You won't be feeling your fit down there. No, no, no. no stop no, pushing no, his going, ego too much, Diaz. Yeah, yeah, I think mean, you're right. Let, let, let me stop. <laughs> well, you see, I, when I first joined the team, mm -hmm. Um, if that was I, I, uh, one of my concerns, because when you go into a new environment, you don't know, you don't really know the people there, so you don't know what they expect for, expect of you. You don't know how well your ideas will be received. But fortunately, at least in my, um, from my point of view, it was actually really uh, welcoming, and I was, I, I, you know, I, they always made it clear that I could always, uh, uh, you know, speak my mind, be able to. Uh, to give my you know my, your, my point of view on things and also uh, give ideas, so that's the, that really helped me um, feeling better in the team personally. Right. That was like the big thing about uh, welcoming you in, uh, in that regard. And it's really interesting because now, I mean, obviously, when you're part of the team, uh, it's not always the same with um, your, some of the people you know in the community. Some don't really um, live this well. They might, you know, see it as a betrayal in a way. Others are, you know, fine with it. So I guess it depends. But what it really uh, helped me do is not con not thinking too much about what other people uh, say about you. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Because uh, when I first started speedrunning, I was uh, going after success or recognition in a way, mm -hmm. and I soon realized that this was not healthy, and it was because it would lead you, you know, down. Um, like you know, that is that that downward spiral where you just go for attention or you go uh, do things for recognition, and when you don't get that, it can affect you uh, pretty uh, severely actually. So yes, part of it, you know, joining joining the team helped me, um, you know, feeling more uh, comfortable. Uh, well, first of all, you know, playing with uh, other people, and also not focusing too much about what the other people think. Yeah, I think these are the two big points. You know, I think I think that's really interesting because I've I've experienced that myself personally. Uh, you bring up a really good uh -huh. point. When you um when you do anything competitive, there is an inherent ego built into this. And yes. whether people like to admit it or not, if you're a speedrunner, there is something egotistical happening uh, subconsciously, right? Like you you see someone's run and you think to yourself subconsciously i can do that better or i can do this super fast i have the self confidence to do it um, and and it is sort of a fine a fine tightrope to walk because you can teeter on the edge of actually being truly egotistical and you can or you border on the edge of uh, uh, being 
humble but hiding your ego as well and as you seek this sort of satisfaction of getting a world record or being recognized as a community figure when that mm. isn't there anymore what are you left with well you're left with a yeah. kind of toxic um persona and i've experienced that myself honestly um so i think you bring up a really good point there and and then like as a speed runner how do you check yourself? How do you check your ego? How do you um, keep yourself humble when you, when you are a speedrunner and you are like you know Amadeus? You're hailed as, in my opinion, the best speedrunner or the best hunting horn speedrunner. But I think on anyone anyone's conversation, you're at least top two, if not the top one. Like, how do you keep your personal ego in check? I think in my case, it's, uh, the the big thing that uh, helped me that I've always been interested in others. And um, I guess to elaborate on this, I've always been interested in seeing what the others do, what they do better, what they you know, they bring to the table. Your, your competition. So whatever, exactly, the competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most important things for me. Because uh, when, whenever someone say, oh, um, oh, we're really good with the horn, I'm like, yeah, sure. But see, there are these other people, there is, when you know, like for me, com the competition is the end goal. It's the end game. So knowing that the competition is really strong and fierce, especially in Iceborne, you, you know that, okay, uh, this what you, you've done is probably good, but you could have done better. You can always do better because you now people that actually think are you know, better than you. Mm -hmm. And you, there's always, I, I, I definitely believe that there's always someone better than you somewhere. There it's is. It's important to always, yes. You see, so when you keep that in mind, it helps you keep, it, uh, yeah, keep, keep that in check. But I can tell you, sometimes I, I, there were times where I was feeling really proud, and then um, my, I guess, ego was challenged. Uh, because I was, uh, I didn't really um, notice. I, I felt like I, you know, I was waiting for some kind of recognition, and sometimes it didn't come. Yeah. And this would leave me frustrated until I realized, like, uh, speedrunning is is a uh, is a cool hobby, but you don't want this to consume you. This kind of mindset. Right. Like. And I, as long I, as you remember that. I guess why it's so fresh on my mind is I just recently did a video sort of examining my own personal ego and sort of like the the things in my life that led me to where I'm at. And I and I even look back on my time in Monster Hunter where, you know, I started my YouTube channel with egoless. I mean completely egoless. I, I had no intention of being a wrecking you know, I'm using air quotes here, recognizable figure in the community. The drifted. Um, Stop, please, no. <laughs> yeah. um, but but it sort of okay. happened. It sort of happened, and people uh, started to recognize me, and then um, and then it became you know, hunting horn and grifted were like almost synonymous, and I never meant for that to happen. But my ego consumed that. My ego absolutely consumed that, and it fueled me. And in a weird way, it pushed me even further to be even more successful. Uh, with speedrunning and then when I finally st st stepped back from speedrunning and I looked at what kind of person I was presenting myself as and what kind of person I actually am there was a there was a um, there was a, a fracture it was it was it was different and I, do, I I started to make an active change and I think um, I don't know it's just interesting I, I didn't mean to get off on this tangent but uh, it's just so fresh on oh, my no. mind I really I like what video. you I really like that I think when we, I would love to, like, the point I would like to get across is that I think ego is not necessarily bad, uh, totally. Mm -hmm. Because if you need that ego to push yourself uh, to get to be better than the next runner, to be better, like, I mean, competitive in your life or in the things you do. Yeah. So I think that's also part of the success. But, you know, as, you know, with everything in this world, it, it can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you use it. So, I mean, so and I guess Chris, all. All of us have an okay. ego in some way. The question is, right. like, yes. how are we behaving ourselves? How, because we are what we are, right? And everybody has an mm -hmm. ego, how big it might be. Some have like a maybe like a super big ego. Some have a small ego. But the the thing is, like, do you have the awareness of who you are, and how do you, how do you yes. actually like? how are you perceived in the community and what are you actually doing? And that's super important to sometimes take actually take a step back um, to observe just observe what am i doing where do i want to go and how do i want to achieve that and right. i think if you have that awareness and, and the luxury of, of being able to 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 see yourself this way um i think you will have a healthy re relationship with your ego <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah, I really like it. Yes, it's yeah. interesting too, Chris, awesome. because I mean, I think accor- according to my calculations, uh, you you know, <laughs> you're the manager, you're the uh, you know, the figurehead of one of the largest Monster Hunter YouTube channels, uh, if not the largest, and you're all of my exchanges with you have been so humble, and you're such a gracious person. Um, how do you keep your ego in check? Because let's let's be honest here. You know it's a big YouTube channel, right? Like, you're not – that's not lost on you. Um, So how do you control your own personal ego and stay focused on, you know, just putting out the content? It it is it is a big channel actually, but the thing is, if you're because you're you're growing it so slowly and it happens so gradually over time, and we humans we tend to like we're we're like animals of comfort. We, right. We're getting comfortable to something, and it, it doesn't appear that crazy anymore. It, it appears to be normal, so it, it's almost it's scary sometimes that like we are having like we're living in such comfort, but we're not even we're not even grateful for it that much we we, we need mm-hmm. to be able to really really be aware of how good we have it like like wh- what a right. huge channel we have and 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 just also be grateful and um, not just i mean i don't know it's 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 a it's a different top it's a difficult topic for sure to it handle, is yeah. it is do you ever just sit mm. back and just kind of like i don't know just be like wow you know like how did this happen dude like i do that with my youtube channel my youtube channel's small dude and i'm i just sit back i'm like why would people listen to me you know like i'm it just doesn't make any sense to me yeah and, sometimes uh, yeah for sure sometimes but at the, at the at the other hand like i'm also thinking like dude i put so much work into this so much yeah. ambition so much um optimizing every little detail mm-hmm. that i'm i'm feeling in a way like Deserved. I've, I've, yeah, deserved in some way. Yeah, sure. Because I, mean, I don't think that's um, I don't think that's like crazy because I feel the same way. Like I truly believe in in work ethic. That's one of like one of the things that I value the most. And I feel like if you have really high work ethic, you get rewarded and no matter what you do. So if you put in the work, you should you should get the reward. And there's no ego behind that. That's just how the world should work. Unfortunately, that's that's not how it is in reality. But I think. Um, someone like the team dark side youtube channel where so much effort has been put in um and now you guys get to reap the rewards of it i think that's just like how it should be but at the same time it's nothing that boosts our own personal ego because we are Mm -hmm. a team at the end of the day and that's the huge difference where i can't just personally i wouldn't be able to just you know bath in 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 fans or whatever in 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 uh, how do you say in in success because i'm not the Mm -hmm. only one behind this channel I might I may be the one like getting the most fame cuz I'm the one actually commentating the videos. I'm the one representing the team the most out of maybe all yeah. the members, but but it's still like it's, it's a team effort. And so mm-hmm. it's it's never somebody like it's really rarely that oh my god, this is Chris, right? It's more like oh my god, this is one from TDS, from Team yeah, Dexter. And this is so much yeah. better cuz it, it doesn't make you it doesn't change your ego too much right it doesn't push right us. right it sort of helps keep it in mm-hmm. check too because yeah. it's not just one person's effort it's sort of the entire team's effort yeah totally yeah that's really cool um so i want to get into uh amadeus mentioned it earlier but i want to get into the esa stuff so oh. so esa uh which is the european speed running assembly uh, which happens twice a year. Uh, I think American viewers can can relate it to uh, Awesome Games Done Quick or any sort of speedrun event like yeah. that. It's a live stream Pretty where much, there's yeah. a bunch of different speedrunners that come and um, present their game. So how did you get – How did, just walk me through how that all happened. Like how did you get into it and then the process of actually going there and performing and everything? That's interesting. So there was one um – one girl working for them on a volunteer basis cuz they are like a they're they're um how do you say a non-profit organization they all their revenue that they make from these events except the manager that owns ESA who is doing this full time except him everything else goes to to charities as far as i'm concerned right. at least so um this volunteer girl um she she emailed me and she sent me she's actually german too and she she made clear that she's a super a huge fan of us she she plays monster hunter herself and she's one mm-hmm. of the people organizing this event and she asked me in this email if um, we wanted to, yeah, just uh, go there and, and show some Monster Hunter stuff. Because Monster Hunter, 
has never been a part of any speedrun event like that before. Never, never. Since it's not a typical speedrun that you a game that you speedrun from A to 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 Z from beginning to finish, like all the other games that are played there, it's literally right. like certain single quests, which makes it super interesting, but also super unique. So that's why it was never there. And so we were like, mm -hmm. dude, this is a cool idea. Um, um, we we kind of liked that idea, and then we we. We, we chatted back and forth a bit. Uh, we saw, can we make this work somehow? Um, I checked with, with Capcom if they can support us a bit there and, and they were able to give us a little bit of support. At the same time, um, the members um, who would have been a part of this um, mm -hmm. were super hyped about it. They they said, Let, sure, let's do it. That's, that sounds cool. And then, yeah, then we started working on, on a, I guess it was 30 minute long, roughly, um, showcase with different yeah. uh, single quests involved um, and eventually one big challenge goal which is tied to a specific donation incentive if that certain number of uh, US dollars gets donated within our time frame that we're playing then we're, we would yeah. do this certain challenge at the end and um, and yeah it worked out really well and um, then we proceeded to organizing everything, which wasn't quite easy to do since we had like people from Italy. We had we had two guys from France and two from Germany. So it was like uh, super from all kinds of different countries from Europe coming together at the same time in uh, in right. Denmark, and then going over to um, over to Sweden and then playing there. And we were there for mm -hmm. three days, um, and then yeah, then back to Europe. Oh, uh, back well, not back to Europe, back to our countries. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That's that's amazing. So how did you guys um sit down and go like actually come up with the itinerary of like what quest you were going to showcase at the actual event? Cuz I know the first one was Aerial Gunlance on a Dogron. Yep, that's right. So how did it all sort of like happen? Did did you, like same thing like the team just sort of sat down and was like what quest would be visually cool to present? Yeah, so we tried definitely to do stuff that looks gameplay wise entertaining. It's it, it's right. a, in a way it was really similar to to the YouTube videos. At the same time, we needed to make sure we choose something that we can somehow find a setup that's so predictable, that's so easy to replicate because it's going to be a live scenario where we don't have many many retries like always right, we do. Right, right, right. So, yes, and the pressure as well. Yes. So which runs work? We're not at home. We're, we're in a different. We're, we're many people behind us watching us. Which runs can we do that are cool to watch so we get as many viewers as possible at the same time we can somehow get them done even if we fail we can kind of finish them so it looks yeah succeed right. successful right so yeah this was the challenge there mainly yeah that was that was a big deal man and it was it was actually kind of cool because basically i think every like speed runner showed up in that chat at some point and just gave team dark side a bunch of love and it was it was sort of similar to when fometo and tsc did the um oh god oh, the yeah. american the world finals. the world championship um yeah, yeah. the world championship yes. where everyone US. just kind of yeah. showed up and and gave some love because yeah i was there too i mean in the chat. yeah yeah I as much rivalry as much sort of um i don't know stuff that goes on in the in the monster hunter community when someone gets the opportunity to show Monster Hunter to the world, it's cool to see all the speedrunners and uh, the community figureheads come in and just and just show their support, show their love. Because at, at the end of the day, everyone's super passionate about the game and they just want to get the game out there. Yeah, that was super cool to see that they all were all there. That was very nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it's, it's and that's how I got interested in that. Sorry. Right. <laughs> no, no, go for it. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> And that's exactly how, when I got really interested in, in joining the team. It was because you know I would be grateful watching the run. You could feel like like oh like it's, it was as if the community was you know united behind Team Dark Side. Yeah, that's something that I have never felt before, and I I really appreciated that. Yeah, it was because, amazing. You know, it was despite amazing. the pressure, mm -hmm. despite the technical difficulties, you were still able to perform well. Uh, in, yeah, in uh, you know live, that was like that really uh, it stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. Was, how was, how was, was the how was the experience playing live versus just playing over the internet? You know, not only are you playing with your team, but you also have live people in the crowd, and then at countless number of people watching. Uh, so, how was that pressure handled with the team? Well, me personally, it didn't really uh, surprisingly affect that much negatively because I mean, 
for me, it's easy to say because I did only one run there, literally. <laughs> the other, right, right. the other four runs that we did, I was uh, in a com- I had that luxury to be able to commentate on them, which I think is is my uh, my strong points compared to the guys who were better at, at actually speed running than me. So um, that was pretty good. But we were f- five guys there, not four. So there was always one guy who could just sit next to it and just commentate everything. So we, to, we yeah. made sure that the ones that are playing can fully concentrate. And I think that is what we ultimately needed. And this is the reason why mm. it went as good as it did obviously Mm -hmm. it could have been better we 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 didn't really succeed the final challenge but ultimately it was kind of okay it was quite quite decent and it was because we were five guys 100 percent. that made a huge difference um and while you were at the event did you get the chance to speak to other runners from different speed games and like how was their sort of view of monster hunter when you when you spoke to them a little bit. We haven't spoken mm-hmm. to that many speedrunners there. I mean, we. It's just like they they knew the game somehow, but they were just super unfa- unfa- unfamiliar with like how how this compares in, on a speedrun level. It was just you yeah. could definitely feel like there was so many people with retro gaming uh, and speedruns, and so many speedruns that even knew each other from the speedrunning community because they are literally there's literally sure. like a speedrun gaming community which is not tied to any games. It's multiple games, but it's all speedrunners. Yeah, and we are literally—we didn't mm-hmm. know anybody there, nobody. Right, because we're and, not at know, all involved there. We're just monster hunter community, straight up. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and I think Pretty a much. big part of that is is the barrier to entry for speedrunning monster hunter is so high compared to other games. Like I can buy um, Mega Man right now and watch a YouTube video and start speedrunning. But you can't do that with Monster Hunter. There is at a the barrier same to entry. Time, but at the same time, I feel like these mm-hmm. other games, they're way more competitive since you have literally every speedrunner is doing the same thing. Yeah, maybe okay, same, maybe it's glitchless track. or whatever, or it's with glitches or those different rules. But ultimately, it, it, it's the same game that's played from A to Z. Whereas Monster Hunter, we have so many quests. Not only that, we have all these weapons. This makes mm. so freaking many setups possible. You can literally pick... A random weapon and a random quest and quite possibly nobody did this before so right right and in, in a way also there there is a lot less competition in monster hunter speed running that's interesting because that's like not- when you're in the community it feels like there's so much competition but but when you actually look at it um yeah and, and you compare it to other speed games like is there really that much competition when you compare it to something like super mario uh 64 or super mario galaxy stuff Dude, like that where there's... have you have you ever watched there's, oh, there's yeah. videos of people analyzing those speed runs those world records yes. in super mario oh, yeah, dude. it's insane it's, dude the level of this it is, is amazing you can't compare this to monster hunter dude this is way beyond monster hunter, in my opinion like did, did they have to have certain fr- frame perfect movements on like dude, this is some next level shit Right. The frame rule. I, I don't know if you you heard of this channel. They go by the name of Summoning Song. <laughs> oh. Britain might know them. Yes. Boy, this is a channel. I. Oh, it's a channel analyzing you know uh, the world record preparation for some kings and the level of not, 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 not you know not just the narrator, not just the uh, the level of you know, the beautiful content how it's yeah portrayed. the production and of the, the actual content the production amazing, yeah. yes but but you you show, you see what goes in was run like. Uh, the, the routing, like how they develop new strategies, uh, how the runners uh, achieve with fast time, is really interesting. I mean, yeah. in Monster Hunter, you also have this, not to the same extent. And, to, and I, you know, uh, people like Griffith actually uh, kind of did this, this for Monster Hunter because Griffith also ha- had a series, I believe it was titled World Record Progression, where you would showcase um, uh, the progression from, you know, like that. Uh, Oh, okay. You started with, uh, at this time, with this mm-hmm. time on this monster, and how, this is how I achieved, or this is how uh, they achieved a faster. Yeah. Run. So, so it it, it kind of harkens back to what I said earlier, where I I wanted to do a speed run so I could have the authority to say, you know, how how the game should be played, and that whole series is called the Road to a World Record. That's how that came about because I would just play until I got a world record and then I'd make a video about how I got it and it was sort of me just being like hey look look at what I did um uh like you can't challenge this because this is the definitive world record here's the information here's how I did it um and of course I couldn't keep that up you know cuz so mu- <laughs> so much effort and then as like basically f- as far as hunting or speedrunning was concerned it was me and Q 
for like the first oh geez like nine months of monster hunter world and yeah, then q or q wait the japanese speedrunner yes q and uh then and then basically three players kind of kind of came out of nowhere who were just like on another level that was mega noom mopa run and amadeus 225 and almost immediately i was just like okay can't compete cannot compete with this uh so so that series uh came to an end <laughs> once uh once the competition um outgrew me so yeah but that's amazing man um the the esa stuff dude that's so cool and it's so big for monster hunter Giving this kind of exposure to the uh, Monster Hunter was really, really mm-hmm. uh, appreciated. Yeah, but also for us internally in the team, it was it was really interesting because it was the first time. Well, Michi and I have met before in real life. Um, yeah, that's it. But for everybody else, it was the first time that we saw each other in real life. And, yeah, uh, that has to be that has to be different. But finally meeting, like you know. Yeah, it's weird, like because you know that person really well, and at the same time you don't know it at all. <laughs> right, 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 right. So and, and how someone is online is it could be completely different than how they are in real life and yeah um, mm-hmm. yeah the online persona may not be linked to that yeah it's all it's pretty tricky I don't know if you you've done that before Griffin but I do remember meeting some uh, like some like the first time you meet people that you met you met online it's definitely I mean it's not really easy you're like um are they going to behave the same way are they really right. would they say they are <laughs> These kind of you know like um, questions they, they, sur- they come to surface. And fortunately for me, I met some of my best friend, uh, best friends, mm-hmm. and I've been able to to appreciate that. But I don't know how Chris, if you could tell us um, tell us um, how it went, like the first meeting. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Well, we we met at the airport in Denmark, and yeah, the funny thing is because. Um, I was expecting that Famu was black, which is obviously not not any problem. <laughs> but I was actively looking for a black person at the airport, while everybody else in the team knew that he wasn't black. So then I was like, always, oh, he might be him. And then they yeah. always were, I don't know, <laughs> laughing about me behind my back. And then, at, and then all of a sudden, Famu stood in front of me, and then he wasn't black, and I was com- completely confused. <laughs> <laughs> And it was yeah. So everybody That's in the team made it, made it full, but it was it was it was a good joke. So that was fine. That's too good. Yeah. So I have a um. I kind of have a more personal question. Uh, for for both of you guys, but you know, when you look back on your your YouTube career, and I'm using my air quotes again. Um, when you look back on your YouTube career, do you have any regrets? Uh, it could be a video, could be how you handled yourself online, could be a situation, could be anything. Do you have any major regrets that stick out in your head? I think that'd be kind of interesting. So the people who want to come up and be content creators can can avoid so, some of these regrets that, that we might have. Ooh, I'll let you guys think about it and I'll tell you one that of is, my regrets. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll tell you one of my regrets. Okay. So yeah, my, sure. my biggest regret my biggest regret in my YouTube career, I actually have two. The first one is naming the the turnaround backslam, the grifted. Okay, that's that's mistake number one. Um, so basically, I made a video called Hunting Horn Masterclass, and it was about the quick turnaround backslam technique, where basically you flick your control stick in the opposite direction and you can perform a backslam backwards facing the monster. Um, And I named it The Grifted. And I did that on purpose so I could, like, really get my name out there. And it worked. It worked. And even to this day, even after I corrected it, people uh, still call it The Grifted. And it's, like, one of my most shameful things, okay? It really is. It really (laughs) is. Um, And it's embarrassing. And I corrected it in the the big Hunting Horn Masterclass video I did. Um, But the second one, the real one that I'm really regretful of, is I did a podcast. The last podcast I did was with Akantarex and Vanoff. And I, I, I regret doing that. Not not because of Akantarex and Vanoff, but I regret doing that and not talking about Akantarex and Vanoff. We spent the whole podcast basically talking about the state of the community and the sort of toxicity between speedrunners and casuals. And I look back on that and I kick myself because I have these two amazing speedrunners and I'm not talking to them. I'm 
about their accomplishments and, and about what they've done. Instead, we're just co- sort of shitting on the community. So I do regret doing it that way. I'm glad we did it, and I'm glad it's out there, and I'll never take the video down. But I do regret not focusing more on a Cantor X and Vanoff. So that's definitely mm-hmm. my biggest regret. But at the same time, you, you can every time like you can always do this again, right? So right, yeah, yeah. Nothing's permanent, right? Yeah. yeah, you learn from these things. I mean, yeah, just literally do the same podcast with them again, and then this time just change the topics. Like, yeah, yeah, you can have to have, I, have the same guests on there multiple times. I'm so glad I did it though because I learned a lot from that. Um, and you're right, but like my thing, my deal is I kind of like not doing a, a podcast every week and doing it frequently. It sort of makes it more special, and that could just be me. But you know when when a conversation with dot, dot, dot pops up on someone's newsfeed, I like that it's, it's not just, Oh, Oh, it's, it's this week's installment of this podcast. It's like, no, this has been like three months, four months since the last one. And, um, I, I don't know. I kind of like that. It makes it a little bit more special. And like the guest that I've had on, you know, I've talked to Shepard, I've talked to TSC, Amadeus, a Cantor X Vanov, like, really really of course team dark side um really special guests and i think that's just i don't know to me that's more impactful but uh, i'd love to have a uh, vanov and a cantor x back on it so we can uh, mm. actually do a real a real conversation video instead of just shitting on the community <laughs> yeah <laughs> i appreciate that you go out of your way to let us know the more i think about it in my case i think it's always like there, there are two things the, the first one is related to my uh, YouTube channel, but the, the, uh, to give you more, you know, information on this, is that my mindset was always about doing speedruns. Uh, I, because, like, like you said, uh, in order to make some kind of um, educational or inform, you know, inform, inform, informational um, content, you need something. I believe that you need something to back it up. Like, right? why would someone uh, listen to what you say? For me, it was and I've always been, you know, fan of speedrunning. That's what I've been doing. But it's true that at some point. I already reached that goal, and I would could have been able to quickly uh, transition to make more, um, uh, you know, YouTube content. And briefly, that's always been talking about this to me, like, oh, you know, you could be making some content right now, like YouTube videos, like uh, informational stuff, guides. And as of late, I'm realizing that there was a place of potential, and there's a, a demand for that. Mm-hmm. So, in a way, it's kind of me not being too um, used to uh, editing and also scripting, and also you. Uh, English not being my, my first language, not being a native speaker. Maybe it is fear that have prevented me from you know, going all out on the kind of content I could be doing. So right. I, now I'm, I'm starting to, to realize this and change it, but that that could be one of uh, you know, the regrets. The other one would be um, sometimes I realize that well, when, you, you know, when you're part of the team, when you're part of uh, and you, whenever you interact with different people from different um, regions or, or countries, we, we may speak, we all you know, speak English uh, to, co- to communicate, but we, the words, sometimes you don't realize how they impact someone. Uh, you don't realize how they interpret sure. stuff. Like and, different cultural, like, um, you know, things and how people were raised and the different sort of um, reasons yes, that they're from. The yeah, and to, that's mainly because when you, you know, when you're trying to work with different people from different origins, that's one of the issues about communicating. Yeah. Like some people may get the message wrong way. How do you make sure that we are all on the same page? I think doing more group projects and also because uh, I was I'm, sometimes I also work uh, try to work on group projects of my own. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized that the importance of this and I and sometimes I go I go back in some of those projects and I'm like uh, I could have this said this uh, better. Sure. And for for example, uh, there is a project I, that I want to work on. It's um, with Japanese players, and uh, I was typing a message because because uh, uh, I wanted to um, make an apology. But I actually my apology was like a really short one uh, in the middle of the message. So when I so when you know that you know uh, Japanese pl- uh, p- people they care a lot about making formal apologies. They care a lot yeah. about the, the process of apologizing. Sure. Uh, when I when I realized that I quickly um, changed it, and fortunately I made sure they understood what I uh, wanted to say. But for example, that's a case where if I thought a little more about this, I wouldn't have done it. Gotcha, it's, gotcha. Yeah. That's for me personally. 
Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it happened to me recently. Like, I had a call with Kahara, who's like our new Japanese uh, guy in the team, who's doing the Japanese channel. And like, I, I usually, I, I really rarely forget or any any uh, appointments that we have or meetings or calls. But like for his call, I was like half an hour or even an hour late, and I was so sorry. And I, I, I was aware of this, and I was like, dude, I'm, I apologized like ten times, I think, for, for right, this. right. <laughs> I just wanted to be sure that, like, I do it appropriately if, to meet other cultures' expectations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so, for, for me, for me oh, personally, yeah. um, um, there's two things, I guess, um, if it comes to really, like, TDS stuff. The first thing that I think, like, we, we had, like, a, a serious lack of communication in the team back uh, for the longest time. Um, yeah. We started to doing doing our weekly team calls um, a few, I think, two months ago or so, or one, yeah, two months ago we started that, and it was because of a good tip from a, a good friend, Eric's, because um, mm-hmm. he's doing it similarly with his team, and uh, uh, I reached out to him because we had some internal problems with TDS, so I reached out to him like, how do you guys handle things like these? And like since then we're we're doing these team calls and it's so much better because um, it gives us an, like an official day and time where everybody can be there and just talk about whatever. Obviously right. we always call re- like regularly since we did runs together and stuff, but the, like we were never really there all of us at the same time and uh, we had mm-hmm. way too few team calls. And since we're doing this, communication is so important if you're working in a team. Like, do not underestimate communication ever. It's it's the most critical thing. It, if it comes to runs that we're doing four-player runs, the most important thing, communication. If it comes to right. just teamwork, communication. Everything is communication, and we, we're handling this a lot better. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's I think that's good to um, for for everyone to sort of take in um, and learn from our mistakes. Like, um, so like real quick before we wrap it up here. I just want to quickly touch on the Copa stuff and how that's affected oh, yeah. Team Darkseid. So I saw on your Twitter, uh, so Copa, C-O-P-P-A, uh, you actually changed the Team Darkseid logo back to, to what it originally was after changing it to this new logo. So how yeah. is Copa affecting you and what are the concerns that Copa is bringing as, uh, as Team Darkseid moves forward? Well, this is one of the things that that makes it so scary because we nobody knows a hundred percent what it will do. That's why, like all these things that we're doing, is just to be, I guess, to protect us in a way, to be more safe. Um, so the, the change of of the logo was because the new logo, while I think most of us are more happy with it than with the old logo, um, mm-hmm. it does look a bit more, I guess, child-friendly in a way if you interpret it like this. If you look at this logo standalone if, without knowing w- what it is for and what content it is related to, like everybody can probably, everybody will probably tell you it, it's more child-friendly than the old one. And sure. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a time uh, being on YouTube where it's, I guess that's scary that um, literally YouTube tells you you can get sued by a, a, like a, a law uh, or people mm-hmm. like literally working for a law that, that is above YouTube and they can sue you for thousands of, of dollars for Ooh. having content that might be for children, but you didn't flag it like so. Like it, yeah. it's, it's fucking scary, man. Like right, nobody right. of us can, can afford that level of, of uh, financial uh, downfall. And like, that's why I'm trying to just do as much as I can, which doesn't directly ne- uh, impact us negatively, um, mm-hmm. to make sure these people that might not understand pop culture, that might might not know what Monster Hunter is, and that it's actually played by adults primarily, yeah. like that they are not in any way like kind of putting this into um, a kind of. Um, in a connection like with the uh, content t- yeah, targeted right. towards kids. And so th- that's why the logo changed. That's why now we have a, um, a disclaimer, a short disclaimer in front of every new video and right, links right, right. in the description that lead to the official rating, age rating of this game, which is luckily above um, like Peggy 16 and uh, rated T for teen. Um, it, Cause if it wasn't, if it was like Pokemon content that we were doing, like we would be in a, f- that would be a big problem for us, dude. Right, like, right, right, right. Pokemon YouTubers, mm-hmm. dude, like, I don't want to be a Pokemon YouTuber in 2020. Right, uh, right. It's quite scary. It's, cl- it's clearly marketed for kids. 
they are the main audience well, so you know well i mean mm-hmm. honestly the it's, it's it's like with monster hunter the big audience is still adults <laughs> it, it, yes. but but yeah those people that are were that at the at the ftc they might not understand that they might not know that they they might be 50 That's plus true. and they mm-hmm. think it's for kids because it's pokemon so why would it not be for kids right yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Despite the big, you're right. Despite the big, uh, audience. yeah, I just wanted yeah. to uh, to touch on that really quickly because I saw it on your Twitter, and then a couple people I kind of pulled out and asked uh, some people what they wanted me to ask Team Darkside, and um, so I'm glad we touched on that. So basically, it's just sort of precautionary measures and just just to protect the longevity of Team Darkside because we don't really know what's going to happen with it. Hmm. Yeah. We, okay. We don't cool, know. man. Yeah. Um, best so of, I best guess, of luck um, to all of us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See you in twenty twenty, boys. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we see it. you or may not see you anymore. We'll see. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. We have, we have to. <laughs> we have to believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I guess we'll we'll wrap it up here, and uh, why don't Amadeus you start, and then Chris, why uh, you can tell us where we can find you, where we can watch your stuff, and uh, where we can contact you. You know, what's your social media? <laughs> oh, I, I'm not used to this. Yeah, no. oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! You got this. Here, just, well, you, got you can this. find me at www.grifted.com. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, uh, in my case, I, I do have um, a YouTube channel mm-hmm. uh, going by the name of um, Amadeus underscore 225. That is my YouTube channel. Um, you can also find my... Uh, I'm also present on, you know, on Twitter, uh, at TDS underscore Amadeus. That is also... Uh, yeah, you see the name doesn't really change. There's not, not, there's not a lot of originality in there. But I'm mainly on these <laughs> two. And also on Discord, but we, we're the same. Okay, awesome. Much. Nice. And Chris, uh, yeah. where are you at? You're streaming, and uh, of course we can find you at Team Darkside, but you're also a streamer too as well, right? Oh, yeah. So I will be returning actually in uh, three days. I'll be uh, streaming uh, the PC version of Iceborne on on, uh, on New Year, so that's going to be exciting. All right. Oh. Um, but New yeah, Year's on uh, TDS underscore Chris on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and yeah, and Team Darkside awesome. on YouTube. And you guys already know it's your boy Grifted. Okay, I, dude, I, I'm so bad at ending these. Like every every time I try and end one of these, it's so awkward. But hey, you know what, guys? Thank, try your best. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for sitting down with me, man. I, it was an absolute pleasure. You guys are so fucking dope. Um, yeah, sure. I hope you guys had a good man. time, man. Anytime. Thanks for having us. Likewise. Thank you very much. It was a, a, a pleasure. To know. We had a really good time. In my case, I really enjoyed this. Yes. All right. So yes, I yes. guess we'll uh, we'll end it there.